Hey guys, sorry I couldn't be there. Um, I had a lot of questions on cutaneous circulation, in particular the AV shunt, so I thought I'd just go over it on the whiteboard. Um, it made more sense to me than when I typed it out. Uh, everything else, though, is still on the PowerPoint, and this will be on the PowerPoint, too, so you guys can have it. Uh, just to get yourself oriented, we have the epidermis here, the dermis, and the subcutaneous. Here we have arteries that go into arterioles and capillaries, and we have the venous side of the capillaries, which go to the venous plexus, and then here we have the AV shunts. All right? Okay, so we have blood flow. We know that blood comes from an artery and breaks off into the arterioles. Now, the skin is a huge organ. However, it's not very metabolically active. Therefore, as the blood that comes from the artery, very, few, very little blood is actually going to go to the capillaries. So you're not going to get very much nutritive flow. Instead, most of the blood is going to go to the arterioles into this venous plexus. Okay? Now, this venous plexus is where it's at. So the venous plexus um, is in, basically in the superficial layer of the dermis, so it's very close to the, the environment if it's right under the skin. So the venous plexus is what we're talking about when Dr. Stanley is talking about dissipation of heat or um, redistributing the reservoir of blood, so, and also uh, this color change in your skin. So the venous plexus is where it's at. It's your main reservoir, and it receives blood from your capillaries and your AV shunts, okay? So that being said, let's talk about what happens if your body temperature increases. All right, as we know, arterioles are under sympathetic control. So every, like everything else in the body, the main um, temperature center is in the hypothalamus. So when your body temperature increases, your hypothalamus actually decreases sympathetic outflow to your arterioles, right? So you have decreased sympathetic outflow. Right? And that causes vasodilation. So as you get vasodilation, more blood is going to get shunted into this venous plexus, all right? So when you get more blood in this venous plexus, you get more warm blood that's closer to the environment. So you get conduction of um, heat energy lost via the venous plexus to the environment. So that's how you get di dissipation of heat when, with decreased sympathetic outflow. So you get vasodilation, more blood goes to the venous plexus. Now let's talk about what happens when you get decrease in body temperature. When you get a decrease in body temperature, you actually get an increase in sympathetic outflow from the hypothalamus. And that gives you a vasoconstriction. Okay? So, we have all this blood going through the arteries, right? But we actually don't want it to go on the venous plexus because we want to save our heat. So what happens is we get constriction of this causing less blood to go to the venous plexus. And then the venous plexus is vain, so it does keep draining, right? So eventually, since we're getting less, more, more of the venous plexus is going to be uh, drained as well. So that's why you get that pallor of a color, the kind of the blanching, if you will, um, because you get increased sympathetic outflow, so you get vasoconstriction, so you get, um, more, you get decreased blood into the venous plexus. All right, now, there's also something called prolonged cold. Okay, so with prolonged cold, you, for a while you get this increase of sympathetics, but the skin still needs nutrients, so it had to get nutri nutritive flow back. So what happens is, is as this is metabolically active, after a while, you do get your local metabolites, and your local metabolites cause a reflex vasodilation. Um, from local metabolites, right? And that's just the body saying, like, hey, I'm getting a little ischemic. Um, I don't want to die. So you get vasodilation and you get nutritive flow again um, so that your skin does not die. And this is what we see when you see kids out for a long time during the day. It's really cold. They've been out for a while. They have really pink cheeks, a bright red nose. This is the reflex um, vasodilation that you see in prolonged cold. Now, I drew it like this. It's the same concept as um, Stanley's diagram, but I thought this was a little bit simpler to understand. Um, and then one last point I wanted to emphasize about how important cutaneous um, circulation is, is that at, at any point in time, your skin can have either 1% of your cardiac output or 30% of your cardiac output. Um, good luck, guys. I hope you do well. Email me again if you have any questions.